to see him. He's like a fixture. So, Okay, let's get started with some iPhone stuff. Uh, so we got to one, two, three, four, five, six tutorials for this evening. Well, okay, maybe we'll get through three of them. We'll see how far we go. And what we're going to look at now is the differences between the iPhone and the iPad, the storyboard, pushing um, and modal differences. So I showed you the push on the storyboard. This one here does the modal. Um, so I think I'm going to start with this one actually. Then once we have the basic concept down on the UI, then we're going to look at popover menus and menus. Menus that pop up and the two different split views. The split view one is going to be here. <laughs> we also have one on switches and sliders and table menus. So we got uh, some cool stuff. We still have uh, another week of this, so we still don't necessarily have to rush through. We can do uh, as much as we feel like doing. Uh, but let's start in with the uh, storyboard example. So I'm going to double click on this one here. We're going to create a storyboard using the, I can never pronounce this word, segwiz, 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 segwiz. segwiz. This is 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 is, so <laughs> no, I have not been drinking. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just tired. <laughs> Using the, the modal storyboard, uh, we've done a modal is the difference here. We've done a push, one screen pushing to another. I'll show you that in a few minutes. Um, so let's go ahead and create a brand new um, Xcode for projects. This is an older tutorial. We can create one uh, of any current version. It's also supported. So just create a new, this is a 4.6 actually, just create a new project. And uh, flip. make sure you're on the iOS side. Single view application works just fine. Go ahead and click next. We do want to click on the use storyboard. And let's just see if we want to make this universal. Um, Nope. Start a new one here. Use the uh, iPhone on my screenshot here. So I'm going to do an iPhone application. You can do a universal, an iPhone, or an iPad. It works all the same way. But I like the iPhone in the simulator because it, um, it, make, it lends itself to a better implementation for demonstration purposes. So let's see. I got it on iPhone, and I'm going to use the storyboard. And I'm going to put a title in here. I'm going to call it the Sigwages. There we go. <laughs> I don't know. I probably didn't spell it right. It's okay. Sigwis. Sigwis? Sigwis. Say that ten times. So we have the main storyboard over here. Uh, so most of what we've been doing hasn't been using the storyboard, so I figured uh, I should show you some storyboard stuff. Uh, it's not too much to it, actually. So if we put a button, actually I'm going to deviate slightly from the from, and I'm going to come back to the tutorial, but I'm going to deviate slightly to show you something that we have been looking at so far. But what we've been looking at is limited. So there's a couple of different ways to get, because here's the storyboard here. In fact, what I can do is grab another view controller and stick it out here. Now i got two view controllers. And we know that we can do this with the table view controllers and all the other things. So we have a couple of different choices in terms of connecting the two views. Because we want to put, and I'm just going to deviate a little bit, put a button on one of them, click the button, go to the other one. So I'm just going to drag a UI button over here. And I'm, imagine I'm not touching the view controller. I'm mean, just having the SIGWIS control themselves. Oh, I almost said that right. So I'm going to go here and go to next. And then on this one over here, I can put a little back button in here and go back to start. So I've got two little buttons on here and when I right mouse click on the button itself it opens up a little window here and then if I wanted to I can wire the button to the view controller but we're going to bypass the view controller. I'm not going to use the view controller and instead what I'm going to do is drag, oops, I'm going to control drag this item over here and I'm just going to send it to the view and then this little confusing window that comes up and says action sigui. Sigwis. All right, so today we're going to look at modal and custom. What I've been showing you is the push, I believe. Maybe I've been showing you the modal. I don't know. Modal. If we push it, we get a different kind of activity than we get with a modal. So to push it, we're not we're we're going in from replacing one screen with another screen which may or may not work for us if I run it right now. There's no control over the push. Let's see what happens. I'm probably going to get an error message or something that's going to happen. Let's see what's going to go on here. 
requires a lot of programming. Or it does require not, I mean, not any programming, I should say. Let's just see, let's just demonstrate the behavior. Oops, unfortunately I'm running it on an iPad, but uh, let's see what goes on here. Oops, I'm running it on my iPad. Uh, you're not going to be able to see that. But uh, I see I get this little thing that started up here, a little thread that comes in here, and then I get this little, if, if I were to run it, let me take it off my device and put it on the simulator here. Stop it here. Stop. Here's most people's problems. You'd think it would be very user and friendly and uh, intuitive, but I'm demonstrating this to you on purpose to show you what, what, what ends up happening and this, the biggest level of frustration is that you have all those options, but don't tell you what they do what you're supposed to do with them. And there's a couple of things people do. They, they try to do the push. And the push actually does work in certain situations, but it's not going to work here. Instead, I'm going to get this that happens to me. So then I can go and be smart about it and say, well, okay, push didn't work. So let me go back to the here. And then I can take this guy and maybe this is the connection I have over here. I can actually just delete it, right? And then I can take him and drag him over here and say, well, what about modal? Let's try that one out. And then if I run this one, I'm going to find out it actually works. And I can go back here and bring it back to forth. But I don't have any control over it through the view controllers. All I got is this one going to that one going to this one. And it's the, and this one should work, actually. So what we're going to do is build it the proper way. Oh, here we go. Back to the start. Back to the next. And in this particular thing, I have it coming from the bottom up on the animation. So what we're going to do is build one that actually has a little bit more control over it and that flips them horizontally instead. So we're going to actually you know, add a little bit more stuff to this. So that's the theme of what we're working with to tell you how you're supposed to be designing it. <laughs> so we're going to run through a proper design. Does that work? Yeah. Just demonstrated it works just fine. It's not necessarily the best overall for building an application to make it more functional. So let's take a look at what this, this is going to have us do. So we're going to make sure that we use the storyboard option we did that. Okay, so we're going to click on the main storyboard. We have already done this, actually. We're going to drag a new view to it. We just did that. Adjust the two view controllers until they're side by side. Change the colors and place a button on each one of them. So this one says uh, second view. This one says first view. So I'm going to change the background color so I can easily see which view I'm on, actually. So You don't necessarily have to do this step, but... Uh, I'm going to put here, go to second view, and then over here, I'll make this one here uh, green, because I like green. There we go. I should ask, that should be an, a test, that should be a test question. What color do all the backgrounds get set to? <laughs> green. <laughs> Back to first. The answer to that question would be green. <laughs> Touch up inside. <laughs> touch down. Actually, I flip back and forth. I got to touch down. What do I like to do first? The user interface. <laughs> no, those aren't good. not questions on my programming style, although I keep mentioning them over and over again. But it is funny. One time somebody says, how come all your backgrounds are always green? Because my computer's green. It just creates green backgrounds. Yeah, let's make this lively up, liven up a little bit in here. All right, so now we're going to add a new view controller object to the project. Okay, so now I'm even really going, but we just saw it work. It just worked fine. Yeah, okay, but that is not necessarily the best design. So what I want to try is kind of model to you the best design pattern mm -hmm. to do this with. So as I've been saying, and then this will definitely be a question on the final exam, is for how many view controllers would you need if you have two views in an app. How many uh, view controllers are you going to need if you have two views in the application? The answer would be two. One for each one of the views. So each one of these guys here that says a, has a controller on it should be controlled under its own controller file if we're going to really follow model view controller correctly. So even in a storyboard we should design it this way. So we have a separate controller. So we're going to design a separate controller. So we're going to add a new view controller object to the project by selecting the view controller object, then uh, right click on choose a new file, yada yada. 
use the Objective C class type, make it a subclass of UI View Controller. I'm going to call it Second View Controller. So let me show you a little trick here. Uh, if I can get back to the project, here it is. If I click on, see this one's selected, and then the buttons down here. These are this is what normally shows up on the side if you have a single view. And then these are shared. So this one already belongs to um, this one already belongs to the view controller over here. This one already belongs to if we clicked on the view controller, we get the same view controller. So what we're gonna do is make sure that this guy's clicked here. If he's clicked, then we automatically get him assigned. Or we can go over here and we can assign him, which is what we're gonna end up doing. We're checking that anyway. So if this guy's selected, I'm gonna go up here to file, new, file. We should have done this a hundred times already. Um, make sure you're up in the iOS Coca <coughs> touch, because if you're in the iOS, if you're in the OS X, if you're in the Objective C class, we were down here earlier, so you have to change it. We're gonna make a new Objective C class, and we're gonna go next. And now we're gonna select the uh, UI view controller, but we're gonna take a look in here, and we're not gonna select the targeted for iPad, and we're not gonna select the with XIB, because we just dragged and dropped and put one over there. So I'm going to unselect those two options. And this is going to be called second view controller. Make sure you're um, subclassing UI view controller. When we do this, and that's uh, second view, I'm going to make sure I called it the right thing. So save the view controller as the default location that you created, and then return to the storyboard file, and we're going to select the view controller object. Well, it's already selected, but we're going to make sure we are selected in the second scene, and then we're going to change the class object to be owned by the second view controller. So if we look over here, and what is it, well, let, me, let me save that, let me actually save this here. <laughs> it doesn't matter where it goes, it was here because I had clicked on storyboard, it can be anywhere you want in the project. But I'm now going to have to click back on the storyboard. So if I click over here, the, the easiest way to find this is to click on the on the um, properties for the uh, view controller. Oops, let's see. the third one. No, one, two, three. This one here. There we go. So you know, I say I have um, the outside is blue, and it says view controller, and the outside over here is blue, and it says UI view controller. What I really want to do is click on this arrow over here and change it to second view controller. The biggest problem that most students have is how do we get the class? Well, it's the third one over here. It's in the um, identity inspector where it's changing the identity of this view controller to second view controller. And if I clicked on the view, I'm going to get UI view. And if I come over here, I'm not going to find it in here. But I could change the UI view to a map kit view, a geo view, a banner view. I can change the type of view if I wanted as well, but I'm not going to leave that. I'm going to leave that alone. So the identity is telling us that this guy's being controlled by, well, he's really part. He is the second view controller because we've got view controller down here on the bottom. He is a view controller. So the wording is kind of weird. It's just the class module that goes along with it. So, but this name down here doesn't change. In fact, now if we look at the, um, if we come back down here on the bottom, I see second view controller down here. And then over here, if I click on this guy, I'm going to see view controller. So I can identify which one is which one by the bottom piece. We haven't really done very much with the bottom piece, but uh, it's basically giving us a graphical of the stuff that's over here. So I'm not really a graphical person. I'm going to pick it, from the, pick it from this identifier. So just like the uh, custom class over here, if we look over here, we'll see that we have two um, controller scenes. So. We didn't do that, but if we come over here and we open up the side panel, we see now we have two controller scenes. We had the view controller scene and we had the second view controller scene. Prior to doing that, we only have one. And they're both in the one scene. So, unfortunately, well, you know, I'll take it off here. What was that one, view controller? Hmm. Hello, view controller, view controller, view controller. But they both say view controller scene, view controller scene. Two scenes under one controller. Don't necessarily want that for abstraction purposes. I'm going to change it back now to second view controller. 
See, the top over here says second view controller. This information is the same stuff that's down here. It's just what view do you like? Do you like to see it over here or do you like to see it down here? So. That is how you connect a view controller to a view controller object in the code to the custom. It's Is it a custom class? Kind of, sort of, yeah. All right. So now we have the sequence here, as we did before. We allow us to create transitions between the view controllers without writing a single line of code. So we're going to control drag from the second view controller back to the first view controller, and from the first view controller back to the second one. And we're going to choose modal. Well, we actually did that. I already have mine set up that way. If you haven't done it, go back and do what I just did in the beginning, which was um, taken that. Actually, now I can get rid of the side piece over here. You can see I've got these. Uh, little arrows going back and forth. So if you haven't done it already, control drag it over the little screen will pop up and select one of those actions. If you don't select anything, nothing happens. So. Yeah, modal, yes. Select the uh, second option that says modal on it. Yeah, the way you delete, in fact here I'll just go ahead and delete mine so I can show you what to do here. Just you can change yeah, you can change it by clicking on here as well. Oops. Yeah. Oh. No. Ah. No, I'm just making it bigger again. On the side over here, you can change it up here. Modal. So if you, I deleted this one already, <laughs> but uh, if you haven't deleted it yet, you can click on it, come over here, and then you can change, we're going to change the identifiers too, but uh, the modal is the one you want. So let me put this one back. I'm going to put it back, huh? Yeah, same thing. So you're just pressing the control button and you're you're not going to the button, you're going to the entire view controller and then if you select modal. If you click on it, it brings it up in the side over here. And unfortunately the two little things kind of overlap each other, but you should be able to get to both of them. And they're both kind of set. Uh, you can't, can you move this? You can't move this. Yeah. But uh, you can kind of sort of see how the uh, connection are supposed to visually look. Oh, there we go. I can get to both of them. There we go. Alright. So let's see what else we're supposed to do. Uh, so when you're finished, it should look like this. And uh, it kind of does. So now we're going to select the Segwit option in the first scene and change its properties as shown here. We're going to create an identifier. So this is the part that a lot of people don't do because now you can actually talk to the screens. So, you're, I shouldn't say it works. There's no problem with it, but it's limited. You're just going to get default behavior out of it. And then without creating the other controller, you're going to have some really obscure code <laughs> that's going to be all put together. Like, all the scenes are going to be on the same controller, which, if you have, like, 20 scenes in this thing, it's a storyboard. You might have a lot of scenes. It's going to get kind of complicated. So what we're going to do, then, is we're going to select the object which is that thing we just clicked on before, and go over to that little screen there that shows up, which is going to be in the Attribute Inspector. And we're going to type in some um, identifiers. You actually have to type it in. So the sequence must have an identifier uh, in order for this to work. And they will not work without one. You don't get one, which is kind of interesting. So I'm thinking in future versions, they should just put one in. But you notice it was blank. So I'm thinking in the future, because why do you just have to go add one? What are you going to add? Well, I should I wish I could cut and paste that, but I can't. It's, it's an image. You also want to note that we have a transition style here that we can also select. We're going to put it on flip horizontal. This one's on cover vertical. You can put it on any transition style you want, um, but we can change the transition style as well this way. Now when we select the scene, we're going to have a second one and then a first one. So. On the identity here, we can go a second. And this is going to be what? Which one is this? This is a, this is the first, first, first. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, so if you change the, the the idea is if you change the flip horizontal and you don't put something in here, nothing's going to work. So it does actually work without it which is kind of interesting because they recently let it work without it. So this is going to be, is that one called second or first? First. This one's called second. Second order. And I'm going to put this one on the uh, flip. Cross, I'm going to cross dissolve it actually. 
and the animation on. So now what we've given them names and a transition style when we run it, it works. So the object is hooked up into the application and um, what we're going to do then is um, link some other code to it for the del delegate. So run the application and we're going to have it working. So it gives, us a, gives, it, gives it a name that we can use and a transition, a transition style. So now I'm just going to make sure everything's working, although I didn't name it the way I was supposed to name it here. So I think I called it second modal. You know what? I'm actually just going to change this one to first. Make it easier for myself. First and second. <laughs> and I capitalized it, didn't I? Yes, I capitalized it. First and second. So now make sure everything's running uh, properly. Everything's connected properly. And notice your transition style will now be set to dissolve or to flip, depending upon what you've set it to. So we can set the, um, oops, where are we going? Come here. Second, I got a flip. Oh, that wasn't much of a dissolve. <laughs> but I got the flip working. I don't like the dissolve. Hmm. Huh? The push one? The transition. There is another option called partial flip. Partial. Oh, okay, hold on. It's good to see that. This one gets hung up. Partial curl. Let's see. Try to avoid that. Oh, I put it on the second one. <laughs> it's not a perfect. <laughs> It's like earlier when the horizontal wasn't being set correctly. Did yours break? Let's see if I can get mine to break. Oh, cool! Yeah. Eventually it's supposed to break? Oh no! Yeah. Where's the button? And you know, the button's getting covered up. You're right, it does break. It does crash eventually. Alright. So now we've played around with the transitions here. Let's go back to the. Yeah. It's not replacing the view, it's adding the view. So, I'm going to take this a little step further here. So, the main storyboard object is hooked up into the application at the UI application level. Any view controllers on the storyboard are therefore accessible via the sequence without writing any code. Experiment with the different styles as an exercise. We need to do some work during the SIGWIS, such as, for example, setting properties on a view controller that is about to be displayed. So we can use the view controllers to set up, and what we're going to do is, uh, actually, you can set it to nil on the view controllers. When the first one unloads and the second one loads, you can reset it, set the objects to nil. If you have stuff in it, probably will help it run. I was just thinking about that. <coughs> All right, so. Right now, we can actually behave, because we have two different view controllers, we can unload stuff and load stuff when the second view controller loads versus the first one. Because remember when your app comes up, you had the view controller that uh, on view load and all the, all the different transactions, transitions that can happen there, which is the life of the view controller. So now we can program it so we can prepare for the sequence and sender and use a de delegate method in the UI view controller to um, prepare the display that we're going to set up. For example, you put in your telephone number and your address and stuff, and you want to address it to something, and you can take all that information and pop it into the second screen. So here we have, um, we're going to set the color of the second view controller. <laughs> Doesn't really matter uh, what we do with it. You can see how the it's potentially used for a lot of other things on the fly, and then adjust the viewcontroller.h and the viewcontroller.m for it. So change the viewcontroller.h file to look like this. So this is the first one. We're going to import to view controller the second view controller. <coughs> so we're going to tell the view controllers about each other. So in the first view controller.h, I'm going to include the code here to import to the second view controller. So now the second view uh, is visible. 
And then on the interface here, I'm going to make a property so I can talk to it. And uh, it doesn't really matter what I call it. Um, whoops, let me go back to the project. I'm going to call it uh, second view controller. It's going to be second VC. Close this window. I keep coming back to it. You don't have to cut and paste all this stuff. You can probably see really easily what's going to be in there. <laughs> so, and then change the vcontroller.m to uh, synthesize second view controller. So we're going to synthesize the uh, controller that we added to it. So I'm switching to the vcontroller.m. And then underneath the implementation, I'm going to add my synthesize line. Now I'm going to go back and see what I'm going to add to it. So I'm also going to add a method here that's going to be second view controller, second view controller. If second view controller, second view controller, alloc, then init. Outside, if not, then return it. Which means if it's already loaded, this will actually probably get rid of your problem with the uh, crashing. Because uh, if it's already loaded, we're not going to alloc it again. We haven't checked for the alloc. We just keep allocating. The reason why that's crashing on here is because we keep allocating and allocating and allocating. It's loading on top of loading on top of loading on top of. So if we put this code in here, this code here is going to be the. Uh, whoop, there we go. So I'm going to cut and paste down here this full body. Let's see what happens here. Second view controller, second view. Don't need the end, so I'm going to paste this in. I'm going to put it right above the uh, view did load. And I can see I've got two methods I'm putting in here. So the first one I talked about a few minutes ago here with the second view controller. So if it's not there, Create it, otherwise return it. Give it to me. Otherwise, then prepare for the sequin. So the storyboard sequin here is going to write to the ID of the sender, UIV controller. So we're going to make a UIV controller object for the destination view controller, and we're going to set the destination view controller equal to a dot background, which is the destination that we're going to send it to. So it's UIV controller, which is going to be equal to a UIV controller, the sequin that we're going to send it to. And then the destination controller, dot destination controller. And then we're going to set the view background color to blue. So hopefully uh, if your background, second view controller is not blue, uh, hopefully uh, change it to another color so it's not blue so we can sort of see what happens here. And uh, that's really what we're going to do here. So running the application from one window is going to send the other one to blue. So in the header file, we imported the second view controller. We didn't do anything to go back to the first one. So we could do the same thing on the first one to go back and, and change it back. So in the implementation file, we lazily instantiated the property for it by overriding the getter. We set the prepared for sequence sender method to get the destination, sender's destination view controller object. Set its background, and then set the object instance in the, in the UI storyboard to its new instance. Very important properties, the destination view controller and the source view controller. So these properties are both the ID that must cast from the UI view controller subtype to access their properties. So let's just take a look here. I want to make sure that I didn't need to use no destination view controller. That's good. Uh, no, I should be in good shape. So I'm going to run mine. See if it sets my background to uh, blue. Also prevents, well, from one to two, it prevents two from opening up twice. If we already have it allocated, it won't open it up again. So I can put the same code in to go from two back to one, <laughs> if that's where it's going. So now I got blue. But I think I said blue here, so let me let me do something. Oops, green. No, but I went to blue. Okay, if I did I call this test? No, I called it sequence. Hold on. Am I upside down? Oh, the test was upside down. Oh, the test was upside down. Remember that test one I did earlier? It was upside down. Oh, okay. Oops. So, well, let me kill this thing completely. 
actually here. Let me just run it fresh. Kill it. Stop it. Run it. It was green and I changed it to blue. So if I click on go to second, now it's blue. It was green originally. So I can do the same code in the opposite direction because I have the same button over there, but I have to add the first view to the second view. So this is not part of the tutorial, but I'm going to do it anyway because I want to see if that fixes the problem of the pages folding up weird. <coughs> so I'm going to take uh, an import. I'm just going to copy this one because I don't feel like copying. So in the second view controller, I'm going to import the first view, which is just called view controller. So I'm going to take out the second on here. There we go. And then in the .h file, actually, I'll just got to paste it from here. Oops. Uh, so that's the second view controller. Let me go back to the first view controller. There you go. Oh, I have to make a property, don't I? Uh, so let's see. Just cut and paste this one. Call it first VC. So I'm going to go back to second view controller. This one's going to be called first, first view controller, and then I'm going to go back to uh, synthesize this one here. Uh, first view controller, and then I'm going to add. Ooh, I got to initialize with nib in here. I um, don't think I need that. Let me go take a look here. I don't believe I'm going to need that. So I'm just going to do this actually. Let's see what happens if this actually works. Uh, so second view controller. I have to change the names to first. This one here. This one's going to be first. I know there's a global replace. And change the alloc to uh, alloc the view controller. And let's take a look at the messages here. Incompatible pointer type assigning second view controller strong from view controller. First view control view, so view controller, view controller. Am I in the second view controller? I am. Let's get rid of that because I don't like that in there either. Uh, let's go back to here to. Mm, could make it weak. Oh, it says second view controller. You're right. Strong. I was going to change it, but you're right. I made the wrong instance here. Um, first view controller. <coughs> Is it throwing in there? I think it's because of the init with nibs in there. The. Uh, let's take. Uh, let's see. Let's just see, actually, because I'm not getting anything here. So let me see what the error is if it does throw an error here. This is uh, this is the view controller. Got in. This is the second view controller. So I'm not getting. Uh, let's see. This one's going to hold back uh, destination. This is the view controllers are strong, which means they're not going away. Um, let's see. You say we get, we're going to throw an error. Let's see what the error is actually. Build failed. Semantic unknown view controller. Uh, UI view controller, first view controller. Uh, that's not going to work. Because. Oh, view controller, view controller. Mm, all right. Unknown type second view controller inside of view controller. Well, okay, well, we'll leave it alone. We didn't add second view controller in here. I did add second view controller. It's because the other one is a. I can tell you why it's not working. The first one is not initial. It's it's a, the it's the way that init with. Here, hold on a second. Let me pull out the. Uh, you tried, tried it. Did you take out the init with nib? So. I would say that it has probably something to do with the memory. So. Let me take this guy out actually. 
me take this one because it's already initialized actually. So, uh, that one's not going to do it either, is it? UI view controller, view controller, second destination view controller. Let's try that one. Semantic issues. I took out the initializer because it's already initialized and strong, which means it's not going to go away. So let's see if they're going to narrow this. It, I don't need to create it because it, it can't create it because it's already created. So I don't need that in there. No, it's working. First one's blue. So now they're both blue. <laughs> so what I did to kind of, not such the great idea, there's probably a way of tricking it. Uh, but because they're both initialized, the code is failing because they're strong and they're not going to go away. Uh, you can change them to weak and play around with it that way, or just take out the first in the uh, second view. Don't look to see if it's been created, because it's already been created. So, in the code for the first one, oy vey, get rid of all this stuff here. This is uh, causing a problem in the second one, going back, because we already have, we've already created it, it's already round, so it's having a, a memory issue. So if you take out that line in the second one, the third one, the fourth one, we can still run the prepare for C one, but we don't, it's not our initial loading of that particular one. We're going back to it. It's already been loaded. Uh, the other choice would be to perhaps unload it or make it weak so it got garbage selected. But uh, either way, um, yes. This is on the view controller, the first view controller. But you know what, though? This one should be second. This guy's got an error. Uh, this one. It's still doing it, though, which is kind of interesting. Uh, let's see. This should be second view controller. Let me replace these two methods, actually. This one should be in view controller dot m. Let me just restore it because I, I, I pressed something to say set to uh, change something and I can't remember what it was. So let me go back here, change this one to back what it was supposed to be to. It's supposed to be second view controller. It might not actually work with that though, let's see. Should be because we have second view controller right here. Yeah, this, is, this will work. There you go. Let's see if I get any build failed. Unknown type second view controller. So we're just casting it. Uh, second view controller, I should know it though. Second view controller. <sighs> we're making a property of itself, which is kind of funny. It actually does work though. We can just leave it because it doesn't really matter. Or you know we can put this in the uh, viewcontroller.m because the viewcontroller.m is actually referring to the second view controller. Because the two screens here, we got a pink one and then we got a a green one, or a peach and a green one. And so if I go to the second one, it's blue. If I go back to the first one, it's now blue. So they're both working. The prepare for is still working, but we're not uh, worrying about the instance. But we're going to create garbage. Yes, we're going to create garbage with this because we keep loading new ones on top of new ones on top of new ones. If we made them weak, they'd get garbage collected eventually <laughs> if, we, if we weren't using them. So Anyway, it's just a demonstration about how to get the views to prepare for the sending of the new view. So instead of changing the background color as an example here, um, we could, uh, I don't know, populate, because um, we can go destination dot something. Uh, and this here we're going dot view. And the destination is where we're pushing to or modeling to. So we can say, um, if there was something on the view, like, for example, um, a label, 
we can um, here we can just go out here. This is the second view, so if we can put a label out here. Oops. Hey, label. And if we call the label something like the label, and wired it to the second view controller. Because it's supposed to find the controller. So actually, this is a good experiment to see if this is going to work. The label. <laughs> and uh, I want to change this transition type because I don't like the other one. So I'm going to go back over here and change this one to. Uh... Hmm. Here we go. So the first one is a flip. The second one is on a. I'll just do a flip for both. So I can see the flipping work. Let me call that the label. So I'm going to go back to uh, the first view controller <laughs> into the .m file here. Compatible view controller strong. Okay, don't worry about that. This is where I started editing it. Destination VC dots. Oh, I have to get at the item. It's not going to work. That's not going to work, actually. Um, we can change the view. Well, let's see, view. <coughs> dot the. Nah, no dice. Um, I'd have to put it. Now, oops. No, I don't know if this is going to work actually. Let's just see. I'm sorry? Yeah. What I really wanted to see, but I'm not typing this correctly. Uh, let's see, text. But what do we got going on here? UI view control, UI view control. Let's see. Property the label. Ah, not going to be recognized. So I don't know. I don't want to make it visible. So we'll just leave it. But theoretically, if it was on the view, if we set it up correctly and had the view identify it, then we could set the property. So it's complaining because I haven't reg I haven't uh, I haven't set it up correctly. But uh, we'll just leave it alone. The idea was to show you how to set up the two view controllers and have one view controller call the other view controller and do the pre pre preparation stage. The nitty gritty details about working with the view components outside of the view, it's view dot something in the sub view parts of it. You have to actually create the properties for it so you can use it and it knows what it is, otherwise it doesn't know what it is. So the first view has got to know about the label that's in the second view. Um, so it's a little bit more entailed than just changing the view background. But it's definitely a possibility in terms of application design or what you want to do. All right, so that was the storyboard example, and uh, let's look at the let's look at the popover. Actually, popover is a good one. So the popover, we're going to do this in an iPad tutorial because we're going to be able to see the popover in an iPad. We can't see the popover in a uh, iPhone because it fills up the entire screen, uh, and we won't be able to see it. Because what we're doing, we're going to create a, a little pop-up menu that's going to pop over the current view. So we're going to replace a view with a current view, with another view. So what we're going to do then is create an iPad project, and we're not going to use a storyboard, but we're going to use automatic reference counting. So go ahead and create a new project, and uh, this time make sure you select the iPad. So it's a single view application. And make sure this one here is set to iPad. Take off the storyboard. Um, once you know how to, the thing with the storyboard, once you know how to add a view controller, once you know how to add a view controller window, a view for it, connect them together, either push them or modal them all over the place, that's all you do with a storyboard. <laughs> and what you can do with the modal is essentially just prepare the new view to see the next view, which is how you're passing, that's how you're going to pass the information back and forth. What do you mean? 
Oh, gestures get added to the view controller. So you can put it in. You don't. You can put it in the XIB file. If you added the gest, ooh, what did that do with that project? Here, let me let me put this one together here. Test. Uh, this is the new project I'm going to create. That's an iPad. Let me go back and show you something here with this one. Uh, with the, uh, oops. Okay, I just closed test with the other one we were working at. Here it is. Let me open this one back up. Question came up about the gestures, and uh, if you were here. For the uh, Objective C course, actually, in fact, I'm going to mention the gestures in a few minutes here. Before we do this next one, I'll, I'll talk about the gestures. I for totally forgot about that. If we go back to the uh, storyboard over here, and we open up the uh, library down here on the bottom, and we we'll type in gesture. We're going to see all of the gestures. We can actually drag them to the view controllers and see how it ended up on the bottom. I'm going to drag another one, drag another one. And we can also drag to this one. So we have different gestures that are being controlled with this one than with this one. You can do it without the storyboard. So let's see it without a storyboard, actually. So on the topic of gestures, <laughs> there's a, I had a gesture tutorial, but for the life of me, I can't find it. So instead, I went out and I found this other one that's very similar to the one that I had put together. I had put down a stripped down version of this. It comes from the same tutorial mix, though, um, which is all going to be from the same authors, or two or three of them. But anyway, long story short, uh, this tutorial, I've had people do it and say that it works. I've never done it myself, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work. But what I'm going to do is download the finished product for you. If you go down to the bottom of it, you'll see a little link that says, here's the example project. Example project works. I'm going to load it up in a few minutes for you. But the URL to this here is right up here. It's, uh, if I zoom in on it here, you guys can write that down. Or you can search on this guy, Ray Wender Lich. Lich. He's got a bunch of tutorials out that aren't bad, actually. Problem with his tutorials, and I'm going to say it's a problem because I really do, anyone who, who goes through the time and energy to put this stuff together should be rewarded. Um, they're a bit long. <laughs> they're not short they're a little long so you gotta do it over a couple hours it's not like a quickie you know like get it all done quickly like the way that I do them it's 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 a two or three hour project to get one done and you get halfway in the middle of it you run into a problem and then then you're stuck <laughs> so um, this guy's though this particular one I understand works uh, from people who've tried it and uh, we were talking about gestures in the previous class, um, so I wanted to mention this one. I was really looking for mine, but I couldn't find it. Um, but this one here will work for you if you really want to put it together. But I want to show you how the gestures are added into this finished product. Um, this is exactly like the one that we showed, that I showed you earlier in the previous class today. So if you missed the class or you're not in that class, you can go ahead and watch the video for it. I gave you a mini lecture on gestures, and I said uh, the easiest thing to do is just put a couple image views out there. <laughs> That's what this one does. So this one's an actual easier version, but this one's got one, two, three, four, five, six different gestures on it. What they did is just what I did a few minutes ago, just drag them from here. So you go into the library, put this together, put two image views out here. These are just image views. And uh, you can see them up here, actually. Here's the two image views. And then drag some gestures. So this is a good model, what to do here. And then out here, you'll see like this little arrow. It's because they won't all fit. But if you come over here, you can see them in this list here. These are all the gestures. Same code I showed you earlier with the draw, except for instead of drawing a happy face, if we look at the view controller for this, Let's just back a little bit over here. He's got the uh, recognizer for the hand pan, for the handle handle pan, handle pinch, handle the rotate. I thought he did the, um, the orientation, but I don't see it. Just see the rotate. That's probably why my other one wasn't working. Handle the tap. So we've got the uh, method implementations for each one of these. And if we go into the vcontroller.n, we can see that they're implemented down here. So on this one here, 
on the handle pane, it's just like the touches begin, touches ends, but we add the object, we make a property for the object, we make a method prototype for the object, we implement the method of the prototype that's going to essentially, this one's going to handle the pan. So if we go back to here and refresh your memory here, we got these, these here are wired to these events. So if I go like this, down here, I see I've got this one, this one, this one, well, they're all hidden. The first one you can see because it, it highlights down here. But if you open this up here, I don't know if this is going to do it. No, this isn't going to do it. But uh, if you only have one or two of them, you can see which ones wire. You wire them to here. You make IB actions out of them. So it's just a matter of just wiring it just like any other component. And then we um, implement the listeners. This ex particular example plays an AVI file using the same technique um, that I showed you before with a AV audio player. Um, it plays a, like a crunching sound or something like chomp, chomp sound. And then on the uh, implementation, we have a method that's going to implement each one of them. Um, so if I start here, put on the top here. I've got the uh, mm, little bit of memory stuff going on here to receive memory warning in there. Send the memory warning back. Load the wave files. I'm going to make the wave out. The view did load. It's going to make an instance of the uh, each one of these gestures. Add the gestures to the view. So we're going to have the listener for it. So the tickle gesture. We're going to call it a tickle gesture. We're going to call it a tap gesture. Then we're going to implement the behavior for when the gesture occurs. So here we have the handle, the pan. Uh, we have a handle to rotate. Handle the, the recognizer, the gesture recognizer, the handle tap, the handle tickle. It's just gonna. This one here is gonna play a message when you. Um, we have two different messages on the tap and then on the tickle. So if I dem if you run it though in here, you're not gonna get the gestures as I was mentioning before. Let me just make sure this thing runs actually. Oops, it's gonna be on my iPad. So if I run it on my iPad, <laughs> we're gonna see it come up any moment. So we see, actually you can probably see it from a distance. We got a little monkey and I got a little banana that shows up here. Actually, here, uh, let's stop it here. Now that it's installed, I'll put it on here so you can see the screen at least. Is it an iPad or iPhone? Mm, I will put it on iPhone. I think it's on an iPhone actually. So if I run the monkey pinch here, if I tap on it, I'm getting the, getting the chomp, chomp, chomp sound. If I go like this, he's making a <laughs> Well, no, it's only on the expand. Nope. See, as I was mentioning before, the gestures don't always work properly. So it doesn't matter where this guy is. You just press on him. But if you press out here, nothing happens. So the gesture objects themselves were attached to the image views. So just as before, when we had the draw image that was on there, and you made it bigger, Make it really big, actually. <laughs> this guy, though, has the, the limit of the size of the, uh, so it's only going to go down to the size of the image view. So, so now I got a small, I got a big banana and I got a small monkey. But uh, you can kind of see where you, it, oops, the banana's too big now. Let's so make the monkey bigger. Oh, so now the monkey won't stretch. So now I got a little, I got a little problem here. Oh, no, I got the monkey bigger. There we go. Monkey got bigger. But the sound doesn't always come. He's supposed to be going, ha, 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 ha. He's not going, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Isn't he supposed to be going, ha, 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 when I pinch him? No. But hey, look, he rotates. So this is the rotating. So I can rotate him. And then on the uh, orientation change, so that's a bad design. So in the previous example, we looked at the orientation change and the image. This does not have the code for the orientation change. This image should have changed. But it's kind of skewed funny now. So if I put him back here, I can see he's skewed again because he doesn't he doesn't scale well to uh, orient <laughs> orientation changes. So yeah, he's gonna look really weird. Oh no, no, he's normal now. But this guy's off the screen. So so you can do it on the rotation for the orientation to to change the images. But it's really not much code actually. It's essentially um, a matter of putting. See here, you can't do anything. I can move him. <laughs> but I can't stretch them. 
And down here you can see what's going to get you on here, your monkey pinch magnitude longitude, so it's giving you the location for the move. Yeah, actually the audio's working. But I thought I had him laughing a few minutes ago. So I don't know if this guy is going to toss. Yeah, he will toss. Oops. But he's tossing off the screen. Can't catch him. Anyway, that might make for a bad game. <laughs> so can't catch the monkey. He's going. <laughs> anyway, I have one that just has a monkey on it. It's a tutorial, and it's a stripped-down version of this one. But it's very similar to the one that had the happy face on it that we did earlier today. But uh, I've had some the example works, the one that I downloaded. I downloaded that fresh from this website, so um, I can, can't can guarantee it, but I have, uh, I have heard that this tutorial works. If you're interested, just go follow through his tutorial. So step by step getting started. It's working off of an older um, API though. So the difference is when you work with the XIB, you'll be dragging it in the opposite direction. So and some of the stuff is enabled by default now. So some of the default parameters changed on it, but uh, it's not too bad. And he explains the code for you as well. So anyway, if you have the time, that's your uh, your gesture stuff. That's su supplemental to the stuff I gave you earlier today. So. All right, back to the tutorial that I started. <sighs> Some midstream here. Popover, yes? Everything. Just like a single view, but you have more multiple. The difference with the storyboard versus the single view is on the storyboard, you have multiple view controllers that you can put out there in there. It's set up so you can have multiple views, one leaning to the other, and each one of them is in its own separate controller. On a single view, you're putting views in there, or you're putting them in, but you don't have a controller mechanism already set up for you. It's just automating the controller mechanisms. As an example, when you click in here, actually, it's not a bad comparison. So if you make some, for example, if I made another project here and use the tab application, I'm going to get a variation of the storyboard, but I'm going to have a tab controller. So we've done this one a couple of times already, uh, but um, oops, it's on iPad. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but you're going to see there's a controller that's set up by the project, but it doesn't really matter because I can turn this one into a single. If I wanted to, I can turn it into a single view application just by, uh, oops, there we go. It's, a, it's big because it's an iPad one, <laughs> but that's the first view, and then we have the second view. And... Uh, I can't get this to go smaller. Yeah, I can, but I don't want to bother with it. I probably should have created the other one. But this is a done by a controller. So here, actually, let me do it this way. It just takes two seconds to create it. So what I wanted to do is create a iPad, iPhone, because the controller looks different. So I'm not creating the storyboard. If I created the storyboard out of it, I'd get the controller with the storyboard combination but I still have this is the tabbed controller but I still have the second view controller with the first view controller and then I have the two XIBs here's the first one here's the second one and I have the controller so it's it's <coughs> it's being run by a tab controller if I do the storyboard option I see it connected together so this one here versus, which is the same thing we get with the uh, single view. So if I do this here and I click on the storyboard option, which most people would do actually, you see them visually connected. So I'll just do this here, this, and then click on the storyboard. What I'm going to see is now them physically connected. So. I have one instead of the two XIBs. I have one, it's called Storyboard, and here's my tab view controller, tab bar controller, and then here's my other two. These are the same windows, but I didn't see them connected together. So the Storyboard is actually kind of a nice feature. It's only been around since like four something, but uh, allows you to visually kind of see everything together. And then you can still add another view controller to it. You can still do the same thing with the non-Storyboard version of it. All the capabilities. In fact, you can take a non-storyboard, turn it into a storyboard-looking one. 
but you're going to have a bunch of views. If you don't have the storyboard one, you're not using that, and you're using separate XIB files, you're going to have separate XIB files. You're one, two, three separate XIB files. Here you just have one storyboard. So it puts it all together for you. It allows you to abstract out the different view controllers and the different stuff for you, too. So. And it's giving you all the same features. So there's some people that start out with a storyboard and then they start adding stuff to it and they, they say, well, I don't want that to be part of it. I'm going to have this one come up instead. You can mix and match tab bar controllers with storyboards with single views with a bunch of stuff. To, and you can just do it programmatically as well if you wanted to. All right. Now that I've created some garbage here. Uh, what did I call this one? I'll just recreate it. This is our popover example. <coughs> it's going to be an iPad. So I believe I'm going to go into a single view application and I'm going to select iPad. I'm not going to use a storyboard. And I'm going to call this one pop so I can remember it this time. And let's make sure we uh, did what I wanted to do. Okay, no storyboard, iPad, call it pop. Now we have this single view that we're going to come up with. So I'm going to go press OK. Okay. And then if I open this project up, I have an XIB file here, which looks kind of big. Unfortunately, I can't change the size of this. <laughs> That's why I don't like it. So, well, it's not that I don't like it. It's just hard to work with on my small screen. So I'm going to put a label on here, or put a button on here. So now we're going to add a UI button, and we're going to change the title to a show popover. And we're also going to change the color of the background if you want to. Finish product looks like this. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we're going to wire the button, and it's going to be called uh, show popover. So we'll wire it as show popover. Whatever you wire it as, just make sure you remember it. So a round rectangular button. Stick that out here. Show, whoops, show, pop over. And then I click on your editor, go ahead and wire something on this event here. So in a, on the exam, just as an example, I might just go, you know, what, which of the following are events for a button? And we can give you like, um, touchdown, Touch, no, the common ones, touch up inside, or one that doesn't exist, like touch behind, or something, or I don't know, maybe not, I mean, or not, something that sounds, it'll be obvious which ones, if you know that, if you've seen this menu before, it'll be obvious which one is going to be like that. It's gonna be like, um, send or touch me now, like, it's something that would not be in this list. So, so I won't be cruel and say something like, what about editing changed? I didn't know that that was a button option for this. That's an event option. How in the world would editing change be a sent event from a button? I don't know. Maybe if you edited the button image or something? I don't know. So let's just do a touch up inside like that one. <laughs> so let's just do uh, But it'll be obvious which one is not, uh, which one doesn't belong. So show popover is going to be what we're going to call it. All right, probably going to ask you a question about the, what's ID type. What's what's the type ID? What is the type ID? Actually, that's a good question. Yeah. It's generic. Yeah. It's everything. It's an object type. <laughs> it can hold anything. So. Why they put that? Well, they should just put the button instead of on ID. They should put it on UI button. So. Okay, then add a line to the uh, include and import as follows. Well, we haven't created the import yet, so we can create the imports, or we can go ahead and remember we're going to put the import in there. So this tutorial kind of works backwards a little bit. So we now we're going to make a new view controller. And the new view controller is going to be a popover. So we're going to choose a file. I'm going to wait to do this include for a few more steps down the road because I don't like error messages. So, oh yeah, so I was going to change my background color. I'm going to change it to purple. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to move right along and I'm going to skip the import because I'll remember to do it. 
time we're going to add a new view controller. Same thing we did in the last project, actually. So choose File, Menu, and then New, and then File, and then select the Objective C class. And then we're going to make sure we call this one Pop Over View Controller. Make sure it is a subclass of UI View Controller. So I'm going to copy this one here. And then we're going to look at here. We want the screen now says targeted for iPad. And we want it with the XIB for user interface. So I'm going to come up here and go say File, New, File. And I'm going to select an Objective C class. Yes, IO, Poke Touch. And then I'm going to call this one. Pop over view controller, and I'm going to select both of these boxes targeted for iPad because I'm working with an iPad here and with the XIB for interface. I don't get two, I only get one XIB, and here it is. It's called a pop over XIB. And if I open up the pop over XIB, <coughs> I'm awakened with this new pop over. <laughs> so, there, it's actually it's a new XIB. So open up the popover XIB file, and then select the view, and delete it. So you can't resize a view made by Xcode as part of the view controller creation process. So we're going to, even though we have a view in there, we're going to delete the view, and then we're going to add a new view. <laughs> because the default view you get is a different view for some strange reason it doesn't work. So if we click on the side piece over here, we can see what we're talking about. There's a view object in there. So if I click over here and I click the delete key, it's gone. <laughs> no more view object. So instead what I'm going to do is I don't want to use the default. I want to use another view. So I'm going to drag another view over. So drag a UI view from the library. And then we're going to size it with the size inspector to be 300 by 383. So I'm going to take over here. Whoops do anything with my bookmarks. Instead I'm going to come over here and go UI view. So this is empty and this scares people because this is all empty right now. The whole window is empty. You just deleted it but you still have the XIB. So the only thing that was in the XIB was the view. So if I stuff a view in here it's going to get really big and now I see the views back. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this inspector window. Oops. Now I'm going to go over to the size inspector window, which is the second to the right. And then I don't like the size of the sucker, so I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to make it 300 by something. 300 by 383. Now you see I got a baby view here. It's a bitsy little view. You can't change the default size of the view that gets created for you automatically, which is kind of weird, actually. Turn this. Oops. Hold on one second. My iPad's going crazy. <laughs> okay, so now we got a little view, a little baby view. We clicked over here on the size inspector, and we changed the size of it. And if your view is big, it's going to defeat the purpose of a pop up view, so you want to make sure it's small. Uh, so now that we have one here, the value of the height and width can, uh, will not change. Um, we can go 0, 0 on it, but it's not going to change for us. The X and Y is not going to change, so we just leave it alone. So uh, what we're going to do now is um, drag a navigation bar to the top of the view. Also drag a UI label onto the view and then set this, uh, this text that's shown below. So it's going to say pop over on it, and then we're going to have a little menu. This is a pop over view. So down here, if we just type in navigation, you see we get a navigation bar. So drag that over to the view. I'm just supposed to title call it pop over. Pop over. And we'll put a little label on the view, just to put something on the view. the label say? This is a popover view. A little popover view on the view. Alright. Also set the background color of the view. Alright, we'll set the background color of the view. So I'm going to change mine to green. Go light green. There we go. 
Alright. So now what we're going to do is uh, set the file owner object. We don't, because we deleted it, we don't have the connection between the view and the file owner, which is going to be a problem in the long run, because when we run it, we're going to get those little really weird messages that come down, and it's going to debug the message that's going to come out at us. So now we're going to right click on the file owner object, and then we're going to, and then we're going to drag from the circle to the right of the view, onto the view, um, to the new view that we just created. So it sets the view to interface builder as the pop overview controller object. Uh, if we admit the step, the view controller cannot display the view. So the file owner object is here. File owner. If we right mouse click, what are we going to set the view? We're going to set both of them. We're going to set the view. View to the view. <laughs> How do we know that's the file owner? If we go into this object itself and we look at the file owner, we see that what we just did was wire it. Because what ended up happening here is that over here on the site, right hand side of the screen here, if I click on the view itself and I go into the, um, click on the view, and I click on the, uh, Oh, that's the view. There we go. No, that's the navigation view. I could click on the view. There we go. <laughs> if I click on the file owner, <laughs> I see its popover menu. What we did was this file owner is the popover view controller because the when we created it before we deleted the view, so that view was connected. This view's not connected. We deleted the one that was connected. We put a new one on there. Now we're taking this guy. We're right mouse clicking and we're connecting him. Right? The same thing we, the same way we would connect the label to the viewcontroller.h. We're connecting this to the file owner. The file owner is pop overview that class we created. So now we have the view set correctly, and we're doing the view. We don't necessarily need to do anything else on here. Looks like that one is all we need. So here's the file owner. View should be switched to view. Not the, so if you've done it to the label, you're in trouble. <laughs> you want to make sure it says view on it. And then you can go ahead and close that window when you're done. Now when we hit the editor, we're going to get this guy that comes up automatically for us, which is going to be our popover.h uh, popover controller file. Now we're going to open up the viewcontroller.m file and alter the file as, as, as uh, shown. Oh no, remove the code and replace it. Let's see what we're going to do here. So in the view controller, we have pop overview, pop overview, pop overview controller. Uh, let's see, we're going to the .m. You know what? Let's just replace it blindly. Let's see what happens. We still need to add to the view controller. We still need to add this pop over view.h file, but we haven't gotten there yet. So. Let's see if my cutting and pasting is going to work tonight. Let's see. Uh, where did my file go? There it is. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Well, let's do it this way then. Let's do it this way. I'm going to take it from the source from the downloaded uh, solution. So this is a popover.m that I'm hopefully in. We haven't added the include file, but we're not in the file that needs the include yet. So we should not have that problem yet. Ah, there we go. So the cutting and pasting isn't really that good of a... Some of these PDFs don't cut and paste well. So if you had the same problem I just had a few minutes ago, download the solution or use the solution at this point, because we've seen how to create it already. And we're, now we're just hooking it up with the code.
Um, cut and paste the code and put it in there if that's the case, and then they'll solve your problems. Did you have a question? I saw a hand go up. Yes? Yeah, it is. This is. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did I put it in the wrong one? Ah, you're right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, yes, because I'm including the view control. Well, this is interesting. Uh, I did. I put the popover view controller into the popover view. Okay, let me go back to the dot m. It's a bit a long weekend here. I want to replace this code in the view controller dot m file. Thank you for pointing that out. So I just did the view controller dot h as well. <laughs> so, I mean the uh, popover view dot m. So I still need to add that header file though to the dot h. So. So viewcontroller.m is getting the code implementation. That's okay. Don't have it included yet. So go over to viewcontroller.h and include. We need to import here. So import the uh, popover controller.h and then the error messages should go away inside of viewcontroller.m let's see button show this is different show popover let's see what I got here Show pop over. What did I call it over here? I didn't uh, show pop over. Perfect. I called it uh, button show pop over. So let me change my code here. Actually, if you called your uh, action something else, <laughs> need to change it. No, wait a minute. Let me let me go back here and see what I have. Uh, inconsistencies here. You know what? At this point, I think I'm just gonna open up the solution because I messed up the I messed up my. So rather than spending the time to fix what I just messed up with my cut and pasting, I'll just go to this solution here. Yeah, in my view controller .h, I called it. Uh, we didn't uh, we didn't create a property out of the button, so we also need to create a property out of the button. So in the XIB file, where's my button? Uh, let's see, in the viewcontroller.xib file, up here on the top, we have to create a property for this as well as the button action. So go ahead and if you want to fix yours, go ahead and add a property button which I, I failed to do initially. We also need to put in the import. So we're going to import the popover controller. We're sitting in viewcontroller.h right now. So you need to make sure these two items are done, which I left out, which is why my other one wasn't working. <laughs> so, And then if you paste the code into the viewcontroller.m, what we're going to get is the implementation. So we've got our two view controllers, our popover view controller, which is going to be controller, and then our UI popover controller, which is our popover controller, our regular controller, popover controller. We've made that in the interface that's inside of viewcontroller.m, we made a private instance because we're just going to use it inside of viewcontroller.m. We've uh, synthesized the button show, which is the property that we created which I didn't create, but that's why the synthesizer was giving me an error. And then this is the method, the show popover button action, or the IB action that's happening with the outlet that we created. That's going to say, if it's there, leave it alone. If it's visible, then dismiss it. Otherwise, if it's not there, create the rectangle. So we're going to programmatically create a rectangle that's of a certain size that fits into the frame. So we're going to take the size and the width of the frame we're going to set for it and we're going to create it we're going to pop it over which means it's going to show up inside of or on top of the current window and then uh, the view did load 
is going to set the controller to allocate a new pop-up view controller automatically for us so we have it ready to go when we want to use it. In it, with, uh, in it with nib, and this is the older way of doing it, but it works. In it with nib, the popover view controller. And then uh, popover view controller, allocate and initialize it with the content view controller as the controller. <coughs> and then that, that's pretty much all we're doing to it. Did we put the code in already for the pop-up view? Let's take a look and see how far we're along in here. So that was the uh, information that we were putting into the view controller. If you read through the notes here, it goes through a lot more detail of what I just kind of skimmed over. So I run the application in both the portrait and the landscape mode, and we'll see that the popover works. So there's nothing in the code that sets the behavior of the popover. So it expects passing the information from the button frame. So if the orientation is different, the arrow is going to show depending upon where we put it in. So you wonder why uh, it would be a nib name will not work. Well, just because we haven't set it, actually. So at this point, if I run it, there's no code really in the popover. The popover is not doing anything. It's just going to show up on the screen. It's going to show up by the button press. So we're only going to see it in one mode on the screen. Uh, so we actually have to load it on the device to actually kind of see what's going to happen. It's just going to move location is what's going to happen. So let's see, this is what's called a pop-over menu, and it's a lot of work for the creating a small little menu, but uh, here it is. <laughs> pop-over menu. So we see our mental menu bar comes up. Now, what this is saying, see how long this is? It's putting it in proportion with the frame. So if I load this on its side, it's going to be shorter. <laughs> so okay. Actually, let me see. If I load it now up on the... Uh, my device. I don't know if I can load it twice. I think I can actually. Yep, build successful. So I've got it loaded here, loading up, and uh, it's on the screen here on the top. If I press the little button, then I get it this way. So if I go this way, this should be longer. So it automatically rotates. That's a pop up menu. <laughs> Looks so sophisticated enough. So. so we also have another way of doing this where we can actually load a bunch of items on it. Oops, we're going to have uh, problems here. Let's see, which one do I want to stop? This one? I want to stop that one. So let me close this down here. So that tutorial just simply creates a pop-up menu. You can put stuff on the menu. You can drag and drop and stick it on. It actually has a separate controller, so you can control stuff on the menu, too. It can be just like any other menu. What's different about it is we set the dimensions differently. So instead of the button actually opening up the same size window, which we probably could have done, and we didn't need to use a storyboard for that either. And it's now opening up a smaller window that we've created. So I have one that's very similar to it. And uh, let me show you what it looks like first. And we'll do that one because we still have some time here. It's going to be the table menu. So I'm going to load the project up so you can see what it looks like. And uh, let's see. It's also an iPad project. It's the same concept of the pop-up, but it's going to hold up a table instead. And we'll see how the table, actually two tables instead, that are coming from uh, a file and an edit option. <coughs> so when we load it up, this is actually not too difficult. We have a little label up here. And the label is going to change with the menu item that we select. So we put a little navigation bar up just called menu test. So if I do here, I, I can see that the file menu was selected, and then if I do this, I can see open was selected, file open, file exit, as is the edit menu that was selected, edit paste. So you can design a menu here that kind of navigates to different screens, or this is just changing the label to different concepts, or different uh, things that were selected. So it's basically giving you a template for which you can build another app with that uh, would follow this kind of kind of this logic. 
It's actually not too hard to build. Actually, it's pretty easy. We'll get, I'll see how far I can get through it. This will probably be the last one for the evening, so don't worry, we're not gonna go through these other three. <laughs> so. But this one goes along with a pop-up, so it's kind of similar in terms of what it's doing. And it's not too long, although it does say it's 14 pages, a lot of it um, is code. So, In fact, we can build the GUI part of it, and then when we get to the cut and pasting, just open up the solution. And we don't have to worry about it. But I want to sh show you how to build the GUI part of it to see how it's put together. And then the code part of it, at that point, you can stop and just open up the solution, which is going to give you the same benefit as cutting and pasting. Unless you'd like to do it, you can do it completely. So what we're going to do now is the uh, same thing as before. We're going to do another iPad application. This one's going to be called TV Menu. And it's going to be iPad. We're not going to use uh, the template, though. It's going to be uh, using an empty application template. Because we don't want the automated controllers going on. So the most important thing here is to create an app that's going to use that empty application template. So go ahead and open up Xcode. And uh, make sure we start off on the right foot at least. This one here is the uh, empty application. And then go ahead and click on next. And uh, let me see, I'm going to call this one uh, tabbed something. Tabbed something. There we go. <laughs> and uh, we're not going to use core data for this one. Uh, we do want to use reference counting and we do want it on iPad. So just make sure I've got that. Uh... Yep, that's what we want to do. So go ahead and create it. iPad building. We're in the we're in the factory building. <laughs> iPad app factory feels like every Monday night here. <laughs> okay, so now we got it. Because at the end of the night I look at my desktop and I go, man, there's a lot of apps on that desktop. <laughs> Alright, so we don't get anything. Nothing. This is great. Because it's empty. We should we shouldn't get anything, right? Alright, so this is too full because it's also demonstrating the empty part of it. We did this once before actually for the uh, core data. So so you must now add a view controller to serve as your application view controller. So now we're going to take an empty app and turn it into a single view controller. <laughs> so we're going to create our own template, essentially, by creating the single view controller. This is how you're going to do it if you're going to use core data for anything. If you're going to use core data, you're going to just have to go with the empty app. Why did I put it in a single view controller? Don't know. But uh, So let's go ahead and in front of the file menu, select file, new, as shown below. And... Uh, See, there's a lot of screenshots in this one, too, which is why it's kind of long. Main view controller, how about that? Targeted for iPad and use an XIB interface. So we'll go ahead and uh, we should be able to do this on our own now. New file. And uh, we're going to create a Objective C class. And it's going to be in the Cocoa Touch category. And uh, look at that. It's already, it's already selected for me. So I'm going to touch type in main view controller. It doesn't probably could just leave it on view controller if we wanted to, but uh, it's okay. And then uh, go ahead and press create. So now we got a view controller. So now we have a single view controller application. <laughs> Same thing as the other template, believe it or not. Uh, well, similar. There's a, there, are, there are some differences. If we look at, actually, if you want to see the differences real quick, you can see it with this here. The in it with nib. Don't get that. We should just get the view control. You can actually remove this and be just fine. The only thing, though, is we don't have a... It's not connected to the app delegate. So a lot of people cheat sheet it, and when they figure that out, they go, well, if there's not connected, can we just write that? Can we just take that and put that in the, in the front of um, all of our view controllers? Yeah. <laughs> it does work. So you could do it that way. So now that we have our view controller, now what we're going to do with this view controller is we're going to add the app delegate. So now that we have the view controller, let's add it to the app delegate because we're going to do it properly now instead of doing it uh, through the nib. So the app delegate, so it knows what we're, doing, we're going to talk about. So open up the app delegate and adjust this follows. Just, oh God, just remove the code. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if this works. I'm going to take this to a certain point, but app delegate.h needs to know about the view controller. So what we're doing, if we take a look at the before and after, I can tell you what changed her. So if we open up the app delegate.h, we don't have anything in here, we just have the UI window. So after the after we make the changes and then we're responding, UI responder, UI app application delegate, and it's 
calling a UI window. So if I put the code in here, I have a main view controller. And the main view controller here, if I get rid of my formatting errors. There we go. Actually, this is not too bad. It seems to have worked okay. There we go. Before I give up completely on cutting and pasting, <laughs> just have to be careful. Uh, it's the same um, method prototype as before. It's UI Respond or UI Application Delegate. Same as before. The only thing is that we've added. So if your cut and pasting doesn't work, undo it and just put these two lines of code in here. And the two lines of code are for main view controller. And we're going to call it a root controller. And then we have UI Navigation Controller. We're going to add a navigation controller in there. And the navigation controller is going to be the controller that we're going to add to the UI view. So it's a navigation bar. So to programmatically get at the buttons and to put buttons on it, well, we have to get at it, so we have to make a reference to it. So we made it into a property. So go ahead now, and now we're probably going to edit the app delegate.m next, which is usually the sequence of going in terms of the stage. So go ahead and open up app delegate.m. Synthesize the properties and make the following changes. Well, let's see. I'm going to take my chances again on a cut and paste. And what we did was synthesize the window, which is already there, synthesize the root view controller and the navigation controller. And then in this window here, the did finished launching with options, we're going to make an instance of this uh, root view controller. And it's going to be the main view controller alloc that we're going to create. And it's going to be alloc with a name, so we can refer to it by main view controller. And then we're going to have another root view controller title. It's going to be menu test. It shows up on the top. And then the UI navigation controller. So the UI navigation controller is going to be initialized and allocated here as well to work with the UI view root controller, root to VC, which is what uh, we just added above. And then we're going to set the sub view so that the navigation controller is a sub view of the view for the main view controller that we created. And then we have the window make key invisible. It's just as basically says, okay, show it now. So let's see if this cutting and pasting actually works. You know, if the line returns weren't working, but everything else is working, so let's see. Uh, whoa. We don't need the application will resign active application did enter the background application will enter the foreground application did become active and application will terminate. If you're here this weekend for the app lifecycle, <laughs> this is the equivalent for iOS. These are all the different states the application can go into. So we're not programming any of them though, and by default they're all empty. And if you read the notes in there, it tells you what you're supposed to put in there for each one of the states. So let's see if this paste job works. Of course. Let's see. Oh, of course. There we go. Uh, synthesizing it. Let's put it in there. I just like to clean it up a little bit. Synthesize this one too. Good deal. Head success. All right, so now I'm, uh, as far as the app delegate is concerned, I'm ready to go for that. No more to do with that. After creating the window, the UI root, the U root view, view controller property is instantiated. Just what we did. I just read through the description of all that stuff now. So now we need to make some changes to the XIB file. So open up main view controller XIB, which was the new one that we just created, and we're going to drag over. So drag a toolbar to the bottom of the view. So in the lower left-hand corner of the interface, it looks like this. We're going to add a couple of new UIs to it. So um, first, let's add the toolbar. So drag a toolbar, add it to the second UI button. Uh, let's see. Change the button. Okay, yeah. Okay, so let's just add the toolbar first. And this is in the... Um, let's take a look, make sure I'm in the right... Uh, main view controller to XIB is the only one we have, actually. I think about it. If I just put in here tool, toolbar, I got toolbar. So it's kind of like the navigation bar. Toolbar goes, uh, we're going to put it on the bottom. That's our toolbar. If we just stretch it out like that, it fills up the whole area. 
This one's going to be the file. Might I suggest just double click on here and say file. We're going to add another button to this. So, which I think it's going to do here. So, I uh, change the first button's text to file. Add a second UI bar button item to the toolbar and title it edit. So, bar button item. So, go down here. Bar button item. It's the same bar button item that you would put on the top, actually. You were doing it on the top. And then and this one's called edit. I guess you can call it anything you want, really. So, a file in and edit. And then, uh, so now that we have the buttons down there on the toolbar, we're going to add some code for it. So uh, now I'll drag two UI table views to the interface and resize them as shown below here. Set both of them to hidden because we don't want them to be shown until we hit the buttons. So we're going to play a little trick. We're going to hide and show the views. <laughs> so UI table views. So let's go ahead and drag a couple UI table views over there. So just type in the UI table view. Or how about just table view? Here's a table view. Not a table view cell or a table view controller, but the table view. Oh, it's a big one. It's taking up the whole view. That's what I hate about this. I guess I could move it out, so resize it, and put it back in. And it is real, actually. It's inside the view, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Let's just see the size dimensions. Maybe I can do it programmatically. Yeah, we're gonna size them. Program. We're gonna size them using the editor tool. Ah, okay. Oh no! Drag the UI label. No, that's a label. Oh, okay. So let's just make this smaller here. I won't wipe out. Wipe out. It is actually smaller. Here we go. It is smaller. All right. I won't wipe out on it. Okay. That looks pretty good. But I want it in the corner. I want it right here, actually inside of this big old iPad thing. I'm going to make it smaller. Actually, I'm going to cheat sheet it and I'm going to cut and paste it and then put it in and move it over. Oh, there you go. We got it smaller. I'm sorry? I'm just going to do this here. Copy. Paste. <laughs> So I got two of them in here. I'll put one of them a little higher than the other so I can get at them. So we're going to change the attribute on them, make them hidden. Uh, so let's see. I can remember where the hidden property is. Here it is, hidden right here. So if you go down to the, where it says view, make sure that the UI view is selected. Hit the hidden button here. And then kind of get the gray out a little bit. Make them hidden. So we've got those two buttons on here, so, uh, excuse me, the UI table views. Just drag and resize them as shown. Mine are a little bit higher up off of the menu, but you can move them around. Wherever they're located is where they're going to show, because we're just going to show it. <laughs> so we can be creative with it, move it around. Okay, now we're going to drag a UI label control to the view. This is where it's going to tell us what, we, what, what item we clicked on. So change the uh, text size to 40, justify the text to the center, and resize it so it takes up the whole width of the interface. So it kind of looks like that. Place a label somewhere near the vertical center of the view so that the uh, these guys don't, uh, don't overlap it. So I'm just going to put a label out here. And, uh, stretch it out a little bit. Change the font to 40. Center it. somewhere near the center. Well, let's see. Change the font to about 40. It's 41? 40. Oop, it's going wild. It doesn't really matter what you set it on, actually. Alright, my label looks pretty good. Alright. So let's see what else we got going on here. 
So finally, set up the main view's background color to a color of your choice. You know, don't really have to set the background color, but it's nice to see the overlays on top of it. it looks nicer that way, so I'm going to make mine green. There we go. Now we're going to open up the main view controller.h file. Because we have to tell the main view controller to make a to use this, we have to set the button information. So just remove all the code and replace it with this one here. Okay, that's great. Uh, all right, so what we've done is we're going to create some properties, and then we're going to looks like we're going to drag it the opposite direction to connect them. So let's see if this actually works here, and then we can connect them backwards. This is what we're going to do here. Uh, you have made this a view controller adapt to the view controller delegate because it's probably now we have three outlets file menu, edit menu, and selection menu. So why are the file menu, edit menu, and the selection display to the label? So we're gonna go backwards and we're gonna wire the code that we're gonna put in here, or you can do it the other way if you want to do it. So you can either put the code into the viewcontroller.h and then uh, wire it backwards or you can wire the components, your choice. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do it like the instructions actually have it, which not necessarily my preference, but we'll see what happens with this. So I'm in main view controller.h, is that correct? I should be in main view controller.h. All right. And uh, take my chances here. Oh, not bad. I'm having luck with the cutting and the pasting job. But I have two menus here that I need to wire to buttons. So I've got a, a property for an IB outlet. I've got a property here. Let's see, make sure I got the line returns put in here correctly. I got a bunch of stuff I'm going to need to wire it. So I got the two, B, two IB actions here. I don't know, I have one. Where's my other one? File menu. Second one down here, let's see. Spaces here. Oh, here it is, the first one. It's an interesting order. Oh, that's the, that's the, um, ah, here we go. I'm like, where'd it go? There it is, right there. <laughs> it was word wrapped on the bottom. So, I want to have two IB actions that we're going to wire to the button touch of that. And then we have these properties that we're going to wire in. Um, we don't have to worry about the arrays. Because that's going to hold the items that are going to be populated into the view. So, if you're doing it this way, you want to go down to the bottom and get rid of this side piece here. And then we're going to right, I'm going to right mouse click on the button. That's the toolbar. button bar item. Well, let's take a look here. <coughs> On the file menu touched. Uh, oh, I see what we're going to do here. So we're going to wire the define two action methods to be fired when the toolbar buttons are touched. So on the file menu button touched item. Then we're going to wire the IB action methods to the sent actions events. So sent actions events is going to be here. So we have uh, sent actions. That's going to be down to the, uh, uh, which one was this one? This was file. So file menu button touched is on sent actions. So we don't have all of the, because uh, this isn't a button, button like a UI button. This is a button not bar item. So we have different properties for that. So you're wiring the, uh, the action sense, which is going to be the selector for it. So we got the edit menu and we got the file menu. And then we're going to have these two views here. Which one's going to be? This is the file menu property. I guess it doesn't really matter which one. I'll make this one the file menu. And I'll make this one the... Ooh, that was the wrong one. Uh, edit menu. No, so I'll make this one the edit menu. Which one was it? This one? Let's see. The second one. So I'll make this one this one. 
Perfect. And then we have the label. So I'm going to wire this label up here. Now we can wire it this way to the label. So make sure all of your components are wired, whether you did them in the forward direction or whether you did them after putting the code in. They both work the same way. They both do the same thing. So. All right. <coughs> so now what are we going to do? Uh, let's see. So we wired the uh, the properties correctly. We've also defined the two action buttons here. Those are going to be fired for the buttons down here. Also wired the data source and the delegate for both the table views to the file owner. So we want to make sure that those two table views have the same owner as the view that's under the view that they're in. Because they're brand new and we just put them in here, we're going to do this. We're going to actually wire both of them the data source and the delegate for both of the views. So we do this, it's actually kind of um, interesting. We can do this um, from the view itself. So if I come down here, oops, let's take a look here. Hit the file owner property. Right mouse click on the file owner. Ooh, we can probably do it the opposite direction. Let's leave that alone. Uh, let's see, fire, oh, wait a minute, table view, table view. How did that get already wired? Interesting. How did I wire that already? It's already it's wired. Uh, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Uh, table view. Table view. Which one are we wiring? Uh, the data source and the okay. Where the data source and delegate of both table views to the file owner. So the file owner. Ah, ah, on the table view, opposite direction. There we go. <laughs> so right mouse click on the table view. This is obviously past my bedtime. <laughs> Drag it over to the file owner. Actually, it's not the bedtime where it's uh, normally stay up a little bit later than this, but I'm exhausted from the weekend. I can't think anymore. So, do it for both tables. We want to wire the table views, data source and delegate to the file owner. Because this guy's already wired. So, he already knows about him. So, whoops. I just put one view inside of the other view. Maybe I can edit. Maybe I can undo move table. Undo move table. Undo move table. Ah, good deal. <laughs> I don't want to put one inside of the other. There we go. So this guy's connected. And this guy's not connected. So connect him to the file owner object. This guy should be connected automatically. He is connected. The deleted? The the, both of them, both of them, yeah. You want to do the delegate and also the data source. So they both belong to the file owner. The file owner is the uh, main view controller that it, uh, main view controller. All right, we are almost done actually with this. Now we're going to open up the main view controller. We're going to write the code for the button selections. So we're going to implement here. We're going to synthesize the file menu, the edit menu, the file menu items, and the edit menu items, and the selection display. All those things we created properties for, we're now going to synthesize it. So because mine's working so far, I'm just going to manually just kind of put the pieces in here. So I'm going to paste in the code for the synthesize, which worked correctly. And now we're going to implement the two IB actions for the buttons. And the buttons are going to open. Well, they're just going to make the views visible, but they're going to populate them. So we're going to create an array of items here. So the file menu button touched. Uh, let me make sure here. At one point, we have to create these items. but uh, It's going to set the hidden to yes. And then it's going to set the file menu hidden to no. If, if it's yes, it's going to make it no. 
so it's not hidden anymore. And then it's going to hide the edit menu by making that one equal to yes. And then it's going to display this display text is going to be file menu selected on the label that we put up there. Else, we're going to do uh, file menu hidden yes, and then we're going to select uh, make it empty. On the edit button, we're going to do the opposite, but we're going to you know, see if the edit menu is out. If it is out, then hide it. If not, or edit menu hidden equals no, make it show. Change the text on the label. Now on the init with nib method, we're going to create the two strings, their NS arrays, that are going to be populated inside of the table. And we're going to populate the tables. So the buttons are just making that hiding and showing each other. And on the initialization of the nib, of this view controller, we're going to populate those two menus that are already hidden. So if you change the properties to not hidden, they'll come up and you'll see them immediately. The buttons are just hiding and showing. Uh, they're just flipping it back and forth. Um, so let's see, on the code here, it's just a regular old NS, NS array. So create the NS array, and we're going to put new, open, saved, etc., and so forth on there. And then uh, for the display, it's kind of crude. We're just taking the index value. We could actually read the text of the index value. Instead, we're just going 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Kind of the, uh, on the table view, did select row at index, sends us the index. So we're going to do a case switch on it. We're going to create a string and a string of the display string. And then the display string is going to be a holder for what we're going to put. We're just manually setting this here. So on the table, we're going to say, hey, this one was selected, this one was selected, this one was selected, from the item selected. <laughs> So it's kind of a way of doing it without having to look at the labels because you have an index of values. So whatever it is, um, hard set it. That's if, if it's equal to, if the table view is equal to self file menu. If not, if it's equal to the other one, then we're going to set it to the other one. Um, what else we got going on here? We're going to populate the cells. It's equal to the file menu. Okay, so then we're going to uh, else, switch it to the other one. The other one has three options on it, so we don't have any testing for it. Then we're going to set self.selection display.text is going to be equal to the display string that we created from one of these case switches that happened here. And then the table view dot hidden is equal to yes. Whatever table view it was, hide it because we're done with it now. And then uh, the number of selections in the table row. This is the basic table selection that we did. We spent three tutorials on it with the friends. <laughs> Same stuff all over again. Uh, we're going to make it one. <laughs> so one item, uh, one, one uh, set selection, items in the selection, and the items are going to be labels. And then a number of rows in the selection, well, we're going to set it to whatever value that we happen to have. So the table view is equal to the menu. We're going to have it equal to the menu items count which is the NS array that we created. Otherwise, it's going to be equal to the edit menus item count, which is the other array that we created with the menu items for the edit menu. So we have the number of rows selected here. And then uh, this is, again, for the cell for the row at index. It's just going to basically set up the index pass for the cell and add the cells into the table view display. So it creates a, an identifier for the cell goes through and configures each one of the cells with the text labels for each one of the items that's in the array. So file menus object at index, index path row. So I configure the cells again and then on the view did load it's just gonna do nothing. It doesn't do anything. And then the view did unload, nothing, we don't even have it in here. And then it did receive memory warning, well we may not have received one at all. So we're not doing anything for that either. So it's basic table display information that we've seen a couple of times already um, in terms of that. So let's see if I can get this to work. Whoops. Now we'll just do it the crude way and see what happens. Don't really need to do the bottom part. They're just empty method calls, but we'll just take them anyway. We should have a working project actually after this step. So this is the vcontroller.m. Actually, I just added the synthesizer. I'll just take it out. There we go. Look at that. No cut. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> oh, 
Cut and paste errors. Uh, let's see. I knew that was going to happen eventually. So let me do this. I'm just going to take it out of the solution file. This is the viewcontroller.n that's going to be uh, problematic. Mm, you know what? I can just do undelete, undetyping. I'm sorry? I know, mine didn't work. Yeah, if I could actually can take it out of the formatted one. Here, let me just do it this way. I'll just take it out of this file. For some strange reason on my computer, when I cut and paste it out of the PDF, it doesn't... The line returns end up getting messed up. So let's go here. Special view of controller that I am. Hmm. What did I do? Paste it twice? Control L? Oh, I'm in this guy. <laughs> Give me that now. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, so. All right, I just cut and pasted it out of the solution file so that I could get it working correctly. Now, actually, I should be able to run it. I believe it should be completely working at this point. Um, so let's take a look here. Oh, it's running on my tab. It's running on my uh, iPad device. There's the label. Let's see if it works here. Yep, it's working. Although my, uh, here, let me take it off of my, it's on my device. I shouldn't have my device plugged in. I had it plugged in earlier for uh, gestures. So let's put it on the iPad simulator. This one is not quite as clean because my menus are moved over to the right. So that, that doesn't look as fancy as the original one. Because I didn't really ever move to the yeah. left. Actually, I can change the background colors of them and do a bunch of fancy stuff to them. We're just, hide, we're just running, uh, hiding and showing them. So. so my label's up too high on this one. But you see I can have a... They're moved over funny. <laughs> it's because I was lazy and I didn't like line them up correctly. Actually, I can be real lazy on it. Let's see, play around with it. It doesn't really look like a pop-up menu though when you move it. Uh, when you um, let's do this. Okay, this one here. When we uh, move it like this. <laughs> there we go. I'm sorry. It's not a pop-up menu. It's not. It's not necessarily a pop-up menu. We're hiding and showing the menu. It's not a pop-up menu. No. Good, yeah. So let's see. Yeah, <laughs> it's way over here. <laughs> Not the best. I did that on purpose, though. Is this? Is this so this is a. Yeah, it's a. And then the menu is going away when I hit that. So. Yeah, I mean, you could put this on any application you want. You know? It's actually. People think it's a menu that comes up when you put it over here. But. Uh, and then you can have like menu options instead of just changing a label, have it open up another view or something. If you haven't done your last assignment yet, I think it's to do multiple views. You can do that. Just have it open up another view. Open the. There's a one we did with the five different views in there. <laughs> just stuff stuff it all inside of the same controller. And just keep. This is what we did here. We just stuffed. If you think about it, all we did was we nested a couple of these table views in here. And then uh, we're hi we hit them. We're just showing them. So. Yeah, it's kind of nifty. It shows you what you can do. So, all right. Um, I think uh, I'm kind of tired. I'm thinking I'm done. <laughs> we done? This is a long weekend for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this video.